Good morning to you all. My name is Vincent White, and today I'd like you to place yourself within this specific scenario. Your good friend is suffering from a degenerative bone disease, and they ask you to aid the recovery by purchasing medicinal marijuana for them. This friend cannot access the plant because they live in an anti-green state, and because you live in California, you have complete access to it. You reluctantly agree to do it, you purchase the plant, and plan on giving it to them by driving to, it, to them since you cannot mail something like that. On your way to them, you get pulled over by a police officer for going a little bit too fast on the highway. The officer does the search of the vehicle and finds the plant you just purchased for your friend. You are then arrested and placed in jail for something that's actually just completely legal where you came from. This is a legal dilemma that the federal government has created by leaving the marijuana law up to the states. Marijuana is classified as a Schedule One drug, which is comparable to cocaine, heroin, and LSD. However, we all know is significantly less harmful than any other Schedule One or Two drug on the federal list, which is why 11 states in the U.S. have made it completely legal for recreational use, according to an article created by Esquire.com on February this year. Since states have legalized it, it is more apparent than ever that marijuana should not continue to be a Schedule One drug. And today, I will be talking about why this dilemma that they created by having marijuana a Schedule One drug and it being a state's issue has a negative impact on our country. The counter arguments and how taking it off the list will have a more impact, a more positive impact for the future. To begin, the issue will continue to be an issue overall because laws are determined through state courts, not, not Supreme Courts. That issue aside, marijuana has started to become more accepted throughout the country. As previously mentioned, 11 states have completely legalized the recreational use of marijuana. In a similar context, 33 different states have legalized the medical usage of marijuana and according to worldpopulationreview.com, 28 states have revoked the threat of jail time for small possessions of marijuana. All that being said, according to a scholarly article made in 2018 by pewresearch.org, 40% of all drug arrests were due to marijuana in 2018. Drug offenses, if you didn't know, are leading causes of incarcerations within the United States. And for further information, the United States has a large amount of incarcerated prisoners in the world by 600, roughly 650,000 inmates. And most of those considerations, I mean, by far most, are due to drug fences. I think out of prisoners, 45% of all of them are incarcerated due to drug fences. Therefore, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense that a leading cause of arrest within all drug arrests is a substance that most people now acknowledge is not as harmful as many other controlled substances overall. Especially within the category it's included on the federal list of dangerous or harmful drugs. If the states believe it's somewhat beneficial to the public, the federal government contradicts that in written law. Then the previously mentioned legal dilemma created by keeping marijuana on a list will continue to lead to more inconsistent incarcerations, which is already an issue. So how did it end up on a schedule and placement in the first place? Well, according to an article posted by WashingtonPost.com by James Davis in 2019, it happened in 1970 when Pre President Richard Nixon signed off on the Controlled Substance Act to briefly summarize the act's like purpose. A federal list was created that placed all possibly harmful harmful controlled substance on a five-tier scheduling list. Marijuana was placed at the very top of the list, temp temporarily, and a committee was formed shortly after to study marijuana extensively. After two years of research and studying, two reports were made by the committee that basically said marijuana is not nearly as harmful as the other drugs, or the other substance on the list. However, it should not be legalized because of possibility of mass consumption. So. The biggest fear was a, a ton of people taking part of the drug, which obviously already happens. So to avoid even more social divide because of like the timing of you know Vietnam and such, marijuana wasn't moved at all to a lower tier, higher tier, etc., and has remained at the top since the list was created. So then the plan to reschedule the drug is very simple. Uh, opinions aside, we are all extremely aware that this is not nearly as a harmful drug as other previously mentioned drugs on the list. It is even beneficial to aid those with health conditions such as epilepsy, depression, and Parkinson's. Since the issue of marijuana is being discussed all the time, all we need to do is make our voices heard by contracting, contacting apologies, our city council and state congressmen. Since it's already legal in California, we need to bring the issue to, 30, to the other 39 states that have not legalized it. So how do we do that for only one state? The fast way to do it is eliminate the problem by a whole. We need to urge our congressmen to make their voice heard and get the overruling that the, that the continued placement is, as, as Ollie, I know for sure, as hopefully all you know, it, it's absurd. 
I know that it doesn't seem simple and it's very unlikely to happen probably to all of you. And I understand that mindset. However, um, it takes one voice to get more voices heard and a ton of voices is how something as important as this starts. So some people may argue that the inclusion of marijuana on the first schedule is somewhat necessary, especially in the current culture, because the severity of it could potentially reduce the amount of people that want to use it overall, which is plausible, especially when it comes to young adults or the youth, because you morally, you don't want to ever want to encourage people to pick up a habit. I, I understand. However, according to a political fact, Dot com article made in 2019 by Jay Hickenlooper. When Colorado became the first state in the U.S. to legalize marijuana for recreational use, the rate of consumption did not increase as a whole. Just because it no longer is legally prohibited, it will not, it will not encourage people to change their entire lifestyles for it. To compare this to a previous issue um, in U.S. history, the prohibition came in the 1920s when the government made the sale, purchase, and consumption of alcohol punishable by arrest across the country. Although it made consumption more difficult, of course, it encouraged people like bootleggers and moonshiners to, excuse me, grow exponentially during the time. Because people were still going to drink regardless. The amendment opposing alcohol was eventually repealed by passing the passing of another amendment within the Constitution. So clearly that counter-argument has no validity, and the continued inclusion of marijuana on the first list, or the first tier of the schedule list, Will just continue to increase incarceration rates across the United States for years to come. And on the opposite side of that, the outcomes clearly outweigh the cons. The first being the obvious, the, the amount of arrests across the country will be de decreased. Aiding the incarceration issue would be beneficial at this point, as prison systems are massively over, overpopulated as of today. The second outcome I can think of um, would be the possible sentence reduction to current prisoners because of legal punishment. This is happening in California, or a ton of cases were reduced because of the then passing recreational use of marijuana. And some of these prisoners can actually even see reduced sentences or entire early releases if it's no longer considered to be as, um, as offensive as a Schedule One drug. And to kind of wrap up my speech, there's clearly extensive amounts of evidence that shows that marijuana should no longer be a Schedule One drug. It leads to an increased arrest across the country is being constantly decriminalized across the United States with new states legalizing medical and recreational usage of it and would bigger, be a bigger benefit to the U.S. culture if there are no threats of criminalization and result to possessing or using it. For all the people who feel the same as me as this topic, I urge you to, again to contact your local congressman through email or phone call as the topic of marijuana is being disputed on the national stage all the time. Um, that is it. Thank you so much for your time.